Hello, you're very welcome to a Gauntlet Hangouts games for those and when watching this, not live because I didn't post the link for this, but you know, in the high in the future, that is hindsight. How's 2019 doing for you? I hope it's better than the last year. Uh, we are playing a game called Misspent Youth by Robert Bowl. It is a game about uh, you know, youthful offenders struggling against dystopia, against authority, against, you know. The way things are, and usually the way things are, is bad, hence why they struggle against it. Um, joining me is a group of amazing people from The Gauntlet. For those who don't know, The Gauntlet is a cool role-playing community. You can find them on gauntlet-rpg.com is the nexus for all that. They're, they do cool blog work. They have a big podcast network, and they have Gauntlet Hangouts, which is where this game was. Um, you know where this game was organized. Uh, first, we we meet our players here. Um, I'm gonna start off from a direction in my screen, probably the opposite of of the alphabetized alphabetized order. So I'm gonna ask you to say name, pronouns, and shout out a cool thing on the internet. Um, it's something you don't have to be involved in. If you don't have any, that's fine. Just you know, just say, hey, just go to the gauntlet, I guess. But like, yeah, if any cool thing you either you're involved in or not, uh, shout it out. Uh, I'll start with Tomer. Hello, my name is Tomer. You can also call me Tomes. I use he, him pronouns. And uh, a cool thing on the net um, is, uh, oh, there's another podcast network called uh, Happy Jacks RPG Podcast. They do like an advice show and some APs and things. And recently they started a new podcast called Small Game Hunter. And I am one of the hosts. So we're going to, it's a, it's a, like all the people are here done in LA. So we meet up and do the recording in a little studio and uh, do like the Twitch live thing. But uh, we'll see how it goes. We just had our first episode like a week ago. Ooh, so watch for that to grow throughout the rest of the year. Uh, next, uh, we got Robert. Uh, hi, I'm Robert. Uh, I'm, uh, use he, him pronouns. Uh, and I can't actually think of a thing off the internet that, uh, uh, to, to uh, plug right now. So uh, I'll just move on. <laughs> Other That's than that, of course. Hmm? Other than the gauntlet, that is. Yeah, no, yeah, that's perfectly fine. No worries. Gauntlet's cool and all that. Oh yeah, links to the gauntlet below on this video. And I know people watch these videos. Someone was commenting on mine, so that was a big ego boost. Anyway, another tangent. Uh, up next, we got Mike here. Hey everybody, I'm Mike. And uh, I live in the DC area. And what I would plug is, I like the Friends at the Table podcast. I'm not involved, but I like it a lot. Oh, yeah. I, Friends at the Table is good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm next we got Gerwin. Hello, I'm Gerwin, he, him. And uh, I'm based in Nottingham in the UK. And uh, I'm, in, I'm in, in addition to tabletop uh, roleplay, I'm involved in LARP. I'm involved in helping with a system called Empire. There's a few thousand of us that get together in the field four times a year. And uh, check it out at profounddecisions.co.uk. Fab. All right, I'll definitely check that out. I'll try, when I go through this video, links to anything you mentioned, I'll try to put them on down on video so everyone can check that out. Uh, last but not the least, uh, we have David. Hi, yeah, I'm David. Uh, I, I also use he, him pronouns. Um, I'm based in Sheffield uh, in the UK. Um, oh, I, well, I mean, it's it's there's probably a very small uh, overlap of, of, you know, in the Venn diagram between like people who uh, are seeing this and haven't heard of the Gauntlet podcast. But we've just had the um, end of 2018 uh, Game of the Year um, episode come out, which is really, really good. Um, there's um, a lot of people talking about some really excellent games. Um, well worth a listen. Um, I am actually in it briefly as well, so uh, so it's it's even something I'm in for once. Fab. And I should probably introduce myself. Yeah, I'm Leandro. I'm the GM for this. Uh, he, him. And yeah, I'll shout out that Gauntlet podcast as well. Basically, if you want like a laundry list of all the games you should be looking out for for the rest of the year, uh listen to that anyway it's shouting out games from the past the present and the future 
So, and, you know, all, a lot of the cool people there, it's a long list, like two hours long, you know, you get rid of a commuter that way, or I don't know, you're playing through Dark Souls. I don't know what you do in your time. That's, that's you. Anyway, what we're doing with our time is, as mentioned, we are playing Misspent Youth. Now, I mentioned that this game is about, you know, you're, you're, you're functionally set in a dystopia that you're fighting against. So, of course, because we're in a gauntlet, we, are, we have a bunch of safety tools that here to make sure that we have a safe and comfortable environment to play this game. Um, so the main ones that we kind of use are lines and veils. Basically, lines are things we're not going to cross, things are not going to come on screen, and veils are things that you know we can, we're going to allude to off screen anyway. They'll happen, but they're not going to be on pre they're not going to be present on screen. Uh, Misspent Youth actually has like a rating system. That kind of determines what the adventure is going to be like, and the one for the one for we're doing tonight, uh, which is called Last Days in Heaven, is PG thirteen. So you kind of you kind of get a sense of kind of what's not or not allowed in a PG thirteen setting. So so we can the the most we can go is I think full Temple of Doom. Um, so they're still you know grabbing a heart out of someone's chest. Or maybe is there? I've never actually seen Temple of Doom. I'm sorry. I'm a fraud. Uh, but other than that, uh, we also have the X card on the table. So basically, if there's anything that happens on screen that people want to roll back, uh, people that you know that's made them comfortable, just uh, press, just, just uh, send out X in the chat, or just make, or just signal me anyway, and we will roll back the scene. No one gets to ask why we're rolling back whatever detail it is but i may ask a specific detail as to what and then we roll back and we're gonna try a different tack so those are the main safety tools we have on here now for the game itself i uh, mentioned yeah miss Youth. it's a game about young offenders youthful offenders uh taking on an authority now miss Youth has kind of like a it takes a while to kind of get going in terms of world and whatnot so we decided to use one of the campaign frames from their supplement uh, Miss Matthews sell out with me, which is came, which was on Kickstarter in 2017, and this is one of the campaign frames. This is written by Gregor Vuga. Uh, you might know him as the writer of Sagas of the Icelanders, which is PBTA as seen through um, Viking historical fiction and you know proper Viking stuff, not the ones with the horns. But Last Days in Heaven is set in a derelict uh, sh spaceship. Basically, our cast are going to be a bunch of kids who were part of this original gang of refugees, orphans, squatters, teenagers, who liberated this galactic freighter from a junkyard and took them out to space to escape their war-torn, uh, you know, their war-torn planet. And, well, things were going well until one of the original gang, his name is Caleb, and you all know him, um, started just started twisting the ship's history. So instead of, you know, a ship that went to escape the war, he's telling the rest of the ship, you know, that our history is of tales of heroism, of, of fighting, you know, armed rebellion, sacrifice, you know, we were warriors once. And he's basically using this sort of twisted history to turn the ship into his own private kingdom. As mentioned here, and the PDF, it's about how history and a people's purpose can be destroyed and perverted by a powerful leader with a loyal throng who has no interest beyond serving his own desire. So that's that's it's a bit timely, uh, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what we're going for. Kind of the aim is like, um, I, I forgot to mention this on the broadcast, but this was meant to be four sessions. We're putting it out the tree because of uh, stuff happening on my end. That's my bad but we will try and get as much done here as possible. Uh, the thing is, Miss Ben Ute is it has its own structure. There's, there's a scene structure anyway, so it's not so... We, there is like a point A to point B in, with each session or which way to go. So first, I'm going to talk about the authority before we get to characters anyway, because the authority is kind of like what's going to color in this world. Now, normally, we kind of create the authority together, but... That takes a lot of time. It takes up. We pre-gen an entire list, which is which is a and we pick uh, concepts through there. But here we just have we we do have uh, the authority here. So so the authority's name is Caleb, as mentioned. And and the thing is, you were part of this original gang of freighter of you know 
freighter teenagers who sold the ship. So when we get to characters, actually, I'm going to ask you one fact about Caleb because there's not even a description of him. And and you you all get to embellish him because you know he he was your friend, and he decided he decided to be a dick. I think I, I think I'm gonna put that there now. He decided to be a dick, unless there's a, uh, we'll see. Play to find out what happens. Um, his vice, which is basically what the authority wants to do, is absolutism, which basically means that he knows the way things ought to be, and he can't stand for anything to be out of place. It's in it wants. It's an obsessive need for rules, hence why this ship is now a hierarchy of people who believe in him and people who don't. So that's his vice. His victim, which is whatever the authority is killing, consuming, ruining, per perverting, or feeding on, his victim is history. You know what truly happened in that planet. And again, you can bring this into your characters and whatnot, but he is very clearly twisting it for the people who don't know, maybe the younger folk in the Strader, maybe people who just you know who just tried to forget things now he is he is perverting history and and you know this is the kind of authority who publishes you know that history books say that america was this big empty wasteland waiting for white people to come and build strip malls that's the kind of history he wants to build over and you know what really happened and his visage visage is the form the authority takes takes so there are there are multiple kinds of authorities like there's religious there's corporate there's state but this one is personal because you know caleb you've seen caleb you know what caleb is and you know who he is and how he does this so you know him and the need i've mentioned there is to command the ship and lead it back y'all escaped from the civil war on this planet but he wants to go back there's probably a good reason why you left again Feed that into whatever characters you want to create, but yeah, that's that's his main need is to go back. Now, to do that, he has what we call systems of control, and this is what you are going to be fighting against. Uh, by the end of each session or episode, as Miss Binu calls them, you either depending on how the struggle goes, you either you either convert a new system of control or the authority wins an exploit from you. Exploits are how you fight back against the authority. And I've got a list of the uh, systems of control on the authority and dystopia stuff tab there. And, and they're pretty much self-explanatory. I'll let you go through them. I'll just say what your exploit is, which is what you're going to be using against the authority at the start. And depending on how well the struggle goes, you're going to convert one of those systems of control into an exploit. Uh, the exploit is the ship is derelict, unreliable, faulty systems. There's a lot of places that's not mapped. That's the thing. He doesn't have control of this ship yet. It's still a big clunky freighter. So that's how you're going to be controlling. That's how you're going to be fighting against uh, what Caleb is trying to do. And yeah, that's basically the long and short of the authority. That's now we get to your characters. And if you look through the prayer stuff, that there's some pre-gen stuff there, but I'm going to assume you all want to create your own characters. Of course. <laughs> um, all right. So if you look at this, um, there's name, age, sex, whatever, looks, which is basically three bullet points of them. Those are, yeah, those. And look at the pre-gen stuff for, like, examples of how that looks. But the main thing that we want is convictions. Of which, uh, oh shit! Okay, no, sorry. Look at that thing. Uh, convictions. Convictions are kind of what you're going to use to, or what you're going to you use from scene to scene. Uh, there, there are two types of convictions. There, the first three are close, which means you pick from a list, and the last two are open, which means y'all come up with them. And means is basically how you go fighting about fighting the authority. They're actually down there at the bottom of the of the character keeper the definitions means and there's the list of them you know are you bad cool fast smart or tough choosing one doesn't mean you're not the either like choosing bad doesn't mean you're not you're not tough that just means you're not capital t tough you know and yeah so and motive is why you're doing this and again there's a list at the bottom uh altruism optimism <laughs> <laughs> outrage, pride, or thrills. Oh, yeah. Feel free to shout out any questions either in the chat 
or while I'm talking, just to clarify stuff. If that's a if if you've got any, so we got a question. Go on. Which is more about the authority, and I guess um, so. We're we're part of the council, and um, I kind of misread this as I was going through it, and. My thought for a character was somebody who who didn't know what had happened, who wasn't there. To me, that's actually a little bit more interesting to not know, fine. but just hear rumors about what happened or have it reported secondhand. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm I'm down for that. Like that's the thing. The council is kind of, is the pre gen of it, but you could totally be a character brought in by those who knew Caleb, or you could all be people who. Maybe didn't know him that well, but like you, you knew something's up. You know, that's perfectly fine as a character concept. But how big is the population on this ship? Um, um, you honestly, you tell you kind of you tell me because again, if you look, uh, I look to the campaign frame of this. There's one page just on the setting. There's a lot of blank spaces. You could be fifty or a hundred. Um, or you could be a lowly twenty. It depends on how big or how small and close you be. I'd say we will not. We won't go over a hundred. Mm, we won't go over like maybe sixty or seventy because we're only here for like three sessions. Uh, but we'll say around there. Oh, there's Robert again. Okay. That sound cool. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, so means is how you go about uh, against the struggle. Motive is why you're fighting back. And opportunity is how you get away with it. Why the authority doesn't consider you a threat. So are you pretty or an orphan, rich, sneaky, or trusted? <laughs> I love that you can get away with stuff because you're pretty. What does that even mean? Um, and yeah. And the other two, which is a MO, it's open. You come up with it. What kind of what kind of person are you? What kind of person are you? Sorry, he closed Google Hangouts. Another chat being pinging there. Uh, sorry. Yeah. What kind of person? Are you? What's your specialty? How you fight? Like, what's your concept? MO is basically what what you are. And yeah. Definitely, yeah, and Tomer's mentioned in the chat, there's a much better tab there. Again, I'm disclaiming this character keeper. Thanks, Tomer. Um, uh, just use that. And yeah, this order, with, yeah, that's that's kind of like your flaw. What's what's your fatal flaw? What's kind of like, what's the bit of you that's kind of still innocent and childish? And that's the last thing you sell out. And we'll talk about selling out when we get into play itself. Um, but... Yeah, that's kind of long short of it with uh, for characters. So, yeah, I think I'll let you think about. Oh, it. I think one thing that's useful to mention, and this isn't the game itself, because uh, like if you read how Robert Bull is kind of like put it together, um, is things like sex and and like all these definitions. Uh, like the character sheet itself, when you print them out, it looks very much like like a government kind of like bureaucratic form, and so. When you answer whatever's under sex, that's really what the government or the authority is saying you are. So if you want, you can still have like a character with a name and what your pronoun is as far as you uh, what you want us to call you as. But sex is like, that's what the authority says, right? So like every all these things are specifically filled out in this kind of like weird bureaucratic uh, template, which is really cool. Actually, funny, uh, Mike mentioned Friends at the Table because they ran an AP of this and they did have a chat about how, yeah, that's kind of cool. But one of them was, one of the players was a non binary person and they were kind of put off on how the first thing the game asked them to is to misgender themselves. And so they actually got in touch with Robert Bow and he put out a alternate uh, PDF sheet, where, which is a youth, uh, it, it's one modified by the youthful offenders. So it just blots out sex. So that's an alternative as well. So like nice. it's a sheet that they, yeah, which is pretty cool. All right, so Mitchell fill it in there. And yeah, I'll mention the Mr. Dude has a structure, we've seen structure anyway. So once that's 
once all the characters filled in and we introduce them, we'll probably take a break then. Um, yeah, I'll we'll think about that for now. Uh, other stuff like character questions that that's going to come later anyway. And you also get to think up of like authority figures, as in because Caleb is just one person. At the start of each episode, you kind of have to think about who who you're going to be opposing, not just Caleb, but like what's you know lackeys or whatnot, other characters that kind of fell under his sway. Can I just check? Are we all entering them in the same uh, character keeper? I can, I can see two of them being filled in, but oh, uh, I think we're we're, gonna, we're moved to the better one uh, for sure. Uh, Robert, uh, you might is that mind. the one under players or player stuff? Uh, it's players. Uh, okay, so I've been entering. Yeah, I've been entering. Yeah. The other one. Yeah, you can probably like almost. Well, maybe I don't know if it'll let you copy and paste it as prettily, but you know they're all in the same, yeah, like right. the same boxes, right? Yeah, I'm getting that sorted now. Yeah, uh, Robert, you might have dropped off the call, but we, there's a, there's another tab there where that's where we're filling all the stuff. It's players.
Am I right in thinking that for each of the yeah, things like uh, smart and the like, we get to add a descriptor on that as well about what we're good at? And... Yeah, yeah. They're basically, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's a quick thing to tell folks like what your characters are like. And also they're, those, I would say right now, the convictions you have, those five, they're kind of like the things, you, there's a mechanic here that involves selling them out later on which is we'll get to that anyway but they're not just descriptors they're actually they're like they're, stats they're, almost right yeah, they're just, <laughs> yeah. well they're you're almost choosing like, which one you're putting your plus one in or something right yeah the thing is they all they all work like that. it's just that they're more like tokens in the sense that you cash them in later no. to, win, to win struggles but it'll it'll make you more like the authority so to speak okay But we'll get there when struggle happens. Oh, and it's probably also useful to say it's okay if we um, have one that another one has, right? Like, they yeah. don't have to be unique or anything. Yeah. You can all be a group of tough people. Sure, why not? <laughs> Yeah, examples for MO are, I'm looking at the pre-gen characters, say, you know, whiz with machinery, arts and crafts kid, one of the cooks in the common kitchen. You know, it, it is kind of like your, the main concept for your character, what they do. Or, or the other one here in the pre-gen, so like everyone wants to be on her good side. You know, what kind of person you are, basically. Whether that's functional or what's your, or your, what's your personality like. Freak kid with a sharp tongue. <laughs> I apologize if you said this already, but what is the character Q? Uh, that's that happens at the start of play anyway. Okay. Every session, there's a there's a character question. There's a question your character wants answered uh, of the character to your left, and we're going to say oh, to okay. the left of in the character keeper. So, and those questions are used to frame scenes, basically. So actually, yeah, if you, it's fine if you want to start thinking about like, but then again, we don't have all the characters yet. We'll we'll figure out those questions later once we get everyone introduced. Hmm. Actually, don't worry about personality assessment. That's just the blurb in the supplement that describes the pre-gen characters. So you don't have you don't have to fill that in if you like 
in the pre-gen, it was just a bunch. It's a paragraph describing those pre those pre-generated characters. So. so you don't have to fill them in just now or ever. Honestly, it's fine. The main ones are the five convictions because you're you're going to be using them to frame what you're doing and how you beat the authority. There. I might just delete this player stuff tab there, so some people won't get confused. I love how we're actually going for nicknames rather than actual proper names. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see catch up there, Robert. Uh... I mean, yeah, that's the thing as well. You're teenagers. Don't forget about that. You might be, you know, teenagers living proper hard life but like yeah you want to be well not i was, I was going to say monster hearts petty but let's not get that petty you're all united against something <laughs> but I'm looking at our role for a party f uh, room right now. Jolly desired crawfish. That's that's bad news for the crawfish. Writing, I might I might as well just go through the systems of control um, if you're fine with that. Basically, those are what the authority uses against you. Um, and those are the things you're seeking to subvert. Uh, at the end of a session, depending on how much, how much struggle you've won, you can convert one of those systems into an exploit. Um, so the systems, there are five of them. And they're basically what Caleb uses to control your ship, which um, I'm, I'm sure the ship has a name, and we'll figure that out later. Uh, if you have, so if you have suggestions, shoot them away. Uh, not away uh, at at the group. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, systems control. Basically, one of them is questioning. Caleb is uncool and cowardly at best, and treason at worst. So watch out for that. It's totally uncool in a '80s PSA sort of way. Uh, you have no written history or records. What Caleb says is what happened. I'll say, I'll say we can play fast and loose with that because I know there is a damage AI in the ship. And again, it's damage. Uh, who knows? Uh, but yeah, that's his controls. And there's, if you can find proof, go find proof. Uh, Caleb's gang have control over weapons, blast doors, cameras, airlocks, and most other systems on the ship. So. Good luck with that. And there are no legitimate institutions or laws to which you could appeal. This is very much a schoolyard pecking order. 
So imagine this ship as like a giant cafeteria and you're all sitting in one table and Caleb, Caleb's have all the best tables. Um, I've not been in a cafeteria in years, so I don't know if that's still true, but yeah, basically that sort of tribal environment and you can't appeal, there's no one to appeal to. You're all out here in space and that's the last system of control. No help can come from outside. The outside world is exactly what you want to avoid because you know, outside world probably sucks if you all got into a ship to get away from it. And now you're stuck with someone who sucks as much as them. So good luck. But don't worry. Like I said, ship is derelict. You can get around it. That's your main exploit. Um, I think we're nearly done. We're almost done. We're nearly there. Uh, we'll introduce characters. And then I'm going to ask you all a question to the character to your left in the character keeper. And say, so... So Robert's character is gonna ask a question of David. Basically, it's a it's a question the character wants the other the character to the left to answer. It's a it's 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 kind of like the equivalent of a of a bond, I guess. Here, it's basically it, it colors in their friendship. And those questions, let me look at the kind of examples you have here on this on PDF. It's like. You want it's something you want to see highlighted or explored or explained about the friendship between those two characters. Like <clears throat> shouldn't be answered, shouldn't be a yes or no question. It's also an opportunity to make stuff up, stuff up, I guess. Uh between your characters. Like samples they have is, you know, what did you teach me about myself that I didn't know? You know, what are we competitive about? Why am I the one you trust the most? Uh, why did you confess to me the worst thing you've done? That sort of thing. And those questions also will frame the scene, uh, what scenes we go through. But we'll get to those like after break. As I'll say right now, we introduce the characters and then we're gonna take a we're gonna take our break and then we're just gonna jump in. A quick question for the character question. Are mm -hmm. should we use um, like as far as like you're going to make you're gonna ask the question of the person like in a if you are a table like to your right or whatever. Are we going to do that here in the character keeper, where we're going to ask the question of like the next one in the sheet, or yeah, are we sheet. Do that? okay, yeah, because on Google Hangouts, we and we didn't figure it out until Maria pointed this out <laughs> on that for the Queen session that yeah, it actually arranges your on Google Hangouts it arranges alphabetically except for yourself. You're always going to be on the far right, and so because everyone's. You know, everyone's gonna be different or far right. It's just gonna be confusing. I would, I would say, use mine, but I don't have to spell it out. No, just the character keeper, the one on the left. It's a bit more, it's a bit more unpredictable anyway, because everyone chose kind of different spots there. So, so Tomer uh, Darcy would ask a question of Robert's character. Robert asks a question. Robert's character asks one from David's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool. And those questions kind of change per session, uh, depending on well, depending on what happens in the session. So we wanted to do um, so before we do the character question, we'll do like the character intros, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. I think we might even do the character questions after the break because again, they're used to set up scenes and. The break will give you enough time to think about the characters and what you want to ask of them. All right. <laughs> but I'm just looking at all this stuff and it's like, oh, oh, you poor dears. Oh, you poor dears.
So I think I already mentioned this, but I also kind of want, again, a fact about Caleb that you know, or or a thing you know about Caleb that you believe to be true uh, for people who don't you didn't knew him as well. I'm far too full of energy after a full day of work. This can never end well. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> okay, so that's something to watch out for. Gerwin has lots of energy and ideas. <laughs> well, it's better than the normal game, but okay, they're about one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Shame just to actually be awake. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> Oh my god. Mm. All right, so watch out for grandma then. Just note that down. <clears throat> okay. I think I think is everyone done pretty much. I think we'll go to we'll introduce our characters. And I think we'll we'll actually go to We'll go with how the sheet. I'll, I'll pick someone random, but then I'll go leftward so they know who which character. Actually, no. Hold on. Let me think about this. Actually, no. no I'm gonna go counterintuitively go from left to right on the sheet so that you know. Tomorrow you're gonna introduce your character so that the person next to you will hear all about that character and they get to think of a question and so on and so forth. So yeah, we'll okay. go. Cool. So, Tamara, tell us about a daring Darcy. Yeah. So, uh, Darcy's his real name, but everybody just calls him Daring. Um, he's 13, um, kind of like a shorter kid. Like, he hasn't quite reached, you know, puberty yet, right? So, he's still kind of like, like, it looks like he hasn't hit that spurt yet, right? Um, got kind of like relatively dark skin. He's short. He's kind of athletic but not like particularly strong um uh you know but but like he's lean right like you you would look at him and you could see like like he's got like little muscles that are kind of like cut right and um he's got side braids uh but the rest of his hair up top is like growing out a little bit so it kind of makes like this short mohawk looking thing um got lots and lots of pockets including sometimes he'll carry like little bags and things or whatever but uh, he wears like these kind of uh, uh, cargo 
you know, pants that he's kind of retrofitted with extra pockets occasionally. And he's like sewn, you know, little straps and things. Um, so, you know, if he needs to quickly put something somewhere, he's got a place to do it. Um, he's uh, pretty smart. Like he tries to figure things out on his own. Like it's not like he's been, you know, gone to school or that kind of training, but he's he, he figures things out. Like he likes to know how things work. Um, uh, and although he looks kind of quiet at first and, and almost like mild mannered, um, when he gets angry, he gets angry. Right. And, um, not so much when, uh, like he's, he's trying to figure out a problem. Sure. He gets frustrated or whatever, but, um, he's got this kind of like, uh, you know, like it builds up, he doesn't know how to express it. So eventually it kind of like boils over and there's probably been like a couple incidents amongst us you know, where, where he's got a reputation for that, where if it goes too long, like suddenly he'll kind of like explode and then, you know, kind of needs to roll back and apologize eventually when he's cooled down. Right. Um, uh, and I'm saying he's an orphan, like he kind of, um, so I, so I think the thing he knows about uh, well, le well, let's get there in a second. So he, he likes to do like engineering stuff, fix it stuff, hacking stuff. Again, not formally trained, but just like tries to figure things out and like work around uh, problems that we run into. Um, and I think deep down he's willing to like, uh, and maybe this will tie into what he knows about Caleb, right? So I think what he knows about Caleb is that, you know, he was watching in secret um, when Caleb offed his parents. Right. And I think his parents were part of maybe like Caleb's original crew, right? Or like part of his like closer circle at some point in the past. And I think what he knows about Caleb is Caleb is like super, um, super paranoid, right? So like he tries to surround himself with people who are not necessarily like the smartest, but the most loyal, right? And so, you know, someone who's smart will sometimes ask questions or will, you know, uh, kind of either contradict or try to help. And I think that's, that ends up working against them, right? And so it's not like his parents were trying to fight Caleb or whatever. I think they were just part of his crew and they started to ask, you know, they, they did that thing where they questioned him or, you know, or maybe he got paranoid about what he, like he thought they were trying to assert power, who knows what. And uh, I think he killed them. I think I saw that, uh, Daring saw that and, um, but from a secret place. And, uh, so, so I don't think Caleb doesn't, doesn't think that Daring knows. Right. And in fact, you mm -hmm. know, Daring was given some story, you know, about them, them dying in an accident or something like that. Right. That's kind of what clued you in that, oh no, this guy is a proper, <laughs> he's, he's a terrible, he's proper, terrible. He'd yeah. lie, he'd lie to your face about it. Cool. Okay. So. Gerwin, tell us about uh, Grandma, then. So Grandma is the oldest of the children on the uh, freighter, on the frigate. Uh, she came aboard originally with Caleb himself and uh, was uh, part of the first group that came together. She's very much a... She thinks of herself as an old school mom to the uh, the kids on the ship. So she, she teaches them how to read and write. She tries and gets them to actually come together and uh, pass on skills between each other because we can't keep the ship going. If we don't have, if we don't learn the basics, we'll never be able to survive out here. She's very much the peacemaker of the group. She's the one that people come to, to mediate solutions. Uh, and Caleb has taken virtually her entire library. Uh, so all of, all of her books that she brought so virtually all the books that she brought on have been taken by Caleb. So uh, there's only a few now that they hand round, and even those have had pages here torn out of. And <laughs> oh, that's that's oh oh poor poor grandma. <laughs> I mean, especially now that Caleb's telling this new history and Petra, grandma had that history but he took it over obviously for her yes so that she's, she still remembers it but she's got no proof yes and and, and the, probably the, cru the crueler thing is that 
Caleb sprinkles enough of the truth to for yeah. you to know that he's got a base to work on because he took care of information. So when he's telling history, it's kind of like you can see it's there, but it's twisted around. It's like, no, it wasn't that heroic, or you know, it wasn't that glorious, or it was it wasn't that clean, that sort of thing. Because he Caleb tells stories about hero heroism and fighting, but wasn't like that. You know better. And this is it. When we came onto the ship, we were a mix of families and children. And apart from a few of us, virtually everyone was in stasis pods. Mm. So for a lot of the people waking up on the ship, they don't have much memory of what happened beforehand. But horror, oh horror, something happened to the adult stasis pods. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I wonder what could happen to them. We'll find out. So, uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Is anything else? No, no, that's it. <laughs> I've, 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 I've had more than uh, my use of the one question I've left. Fab. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mike, tell us all about Faye, aka Moon. All right. So, uh, Moon is so named. I'm imagining like the. Uh, album cover for the dark side of the moon and he decided he liked it even though he never heard the album and he's kind of pale tall uh androgynous um you know you'll see him staring into space or staring at the ground um we've established there are parts of the ship that are kind of um, unmoderate, un, unseen, they're dark, things don't work. So Caleb has, uh, or sorry, uh, Moon has refashioned one of these spaces that doesn't have any operating gravity into a impromptu sensory deprivation tank, which um, he uses sort of as entertainment and he leases out. Um, there's no drugs on this ship, but there are these weird technological hacks that Caleb is kind of mixed up in um, and has some dominion over. His, he wasn't, maybe he was one of these people that came out of a stasis pod or something. Um, his brother was part of the council, so his brother was one of the original refugees, and he um, Moon doesn't know what really happened, but the account that he got from his brother is a little bit different from the account he gets from Caleb. And he feels like specifically Caleb is um, kind of negative about his brother's role, his brother now being uh, dead. And go ahead. Oh, I was just—I was gonna ask. This sensory deprivation place is kind of—is that kind of like your secret hideout for your gang, or is that—is that specifically your space? So I think it's—it's it's not. You know, I know how to get there, and I know how to operate it, or something like that. You know, it's—it wouldn't be a place to hang out. Like if you hung out there, you'd go crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place to go in for like an hour and then have a weird experience um, because those, that's what sensory deprivation tanks are associated with kind of psychedelic experiences and that kind of thing. Fuck. And so, and so you know where your bro, did you know, do you know your brother's dead or do you know that he's just missing? I believe that is, you know, I believe he's still somewhere on this ship or somewhere out there, despite, you know, it, it should probably clear to anyone else that he's he's dead. Um, I'm sorry, that was that was, that was me being sad. <laughs> no worries. Um, so, anything else you want to say about Moon? Oh, so Moon believes that the ship is alive. Um, whether or not that's true, he believes that the ship is alive, and he also believes that that's the reason Caleb hasn't sent us back yet 
he believes that the AI on the ship is preventing um, the ship from going back and rejoining the war. Interesting. All right. Let's see, let's see more of that AI and Caleb later on. Um, David, tell us about wings. Sure thing. Um, wings, or Jake, if, if you want to use his actual name, um, is 15 years old. Um, he um, has like very curly, dark hair um, down to about, about his chin um, in length. He's got one of those sort of really um, infectious laughs. Um, he's quite sort of gregarious in general. Um, and um, he tends to wear sort of like tight jeans and a t-shirt and a sort of long coat. Um, he's actually a, um, he's is or certainly was one of the pilots on the ship. Um, um, so his um, convictions, he's got cool. Obviously, he he's 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 quite like I said, he's gregarious. He's um, does does sort of attract a bit of a a, a crowd to him, sort of thing. He's probably actually um, while he's now obviously diverging from um, um, Caleb's sort of new more um, militaristic outlook on things. Um, he probably was actually quite close to Caleb, sort of part of the um, the inner circle, essentially. Um, um, uh, so his his motive is optimism. Um, he he genuine he genuinely believed in sort of um, Caleb's you know initial um, plan, um, um, and. Um, he doesn't like this change, but he thinks there's still, you know, he still thinks there's a chance that they can sort of get Kayla back on side and, um, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, his opportunity, he's pretty. Um, so it, again, it's just, he's, he's sort of cool, charismatic. The people, people just like him generally. That sort of lets him get away with uh, with a lot of stuff that um, that he might might otherwise not. Uh, yeah, as I said, he's a real good pilot. Um, that's that's sort of his what he brings to to the ship as a whole and and our crew in particular. Um, Is he the only pilot, or pro probably not the only pilot? Because, um, but yeah, he's he's definitely one of them, and pro probably one of the more skilled. Um, he, he's you know been been here since the beginning sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. um, his um, his disorder is that uh, he wants to be loved by everyone. Um, he 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 genuinely he does he does genuinely want to work for people's best interests and stuff. But by the same token, he wants people to think well of him. Um, That's fair enough. Who doesn't want to be loved? Exactly, exactly. Um, I think that's probably covers everything about him that I can think of at the moment. Um, so, um, I, I, you know, as I was going to say, so a thing about Caleb, um, I think um, um, when they um, when they sort of first made the escape um, and and commandeered this ship. Um, Caleb had a twin sister, and she was killed by um, one or other faction in the civil war. We were fleeing, um, sort of as as we were making our escape. Um, okay. All right. So okay, that's interesting. I think does does do people know about this twin sister, or is it just you? Since you were part of the more inner circle, I was going to say some. So, um, um, uh, I'm assuming Grandma might know. As again, I believe she was a part of the initial crew, as it were. But I don't think it's widely known. It's not something he speaks about. Um, it's definitely not part of his his um, edited history. All right, cool. So that's something else you know, Grandma. 
not your proof, but well, that's something you know. Oral, oral memory, oral history is a powerful thing. Uh, last but not least, Robert, tell us all about Cat. Uh, so Katja is a 13 year old uh, girl with uh, long straight hair and you know sort of uh, striking blue eyes. Uh, she's got a sort of military uh, style of dress. She's got you know old you know khaki jacket and you know uh, 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 dark t-shirt and uh, fatigues. Uh, and she she used to be uh, part of a gang of street thieves, uh, so she learned how to defend herself uh, and get into hard to get places and out as fast as possible. So she's uh, she's a bit of a, a parkour expert. Uh, uh, she's uh, very inquisitive. She likes to explore uh, and get. Uh, we just uh, figure out uh, things about the ship and uh, its layout and stuff. Uh, she, uh, thing is, she that she knows about Caleb uh, is uh, sorry. Should have uh, should have mentioned her means and stuff actually. Uh, so she's uh, fast. She she's she's uh, in this because. Uh, uh, her motive is pride. Uh, she she left the street gang to get out from under the thumb of a you know uh, overbearing leader you know who just wanted to uh, exploit her abilities and you know uh, Caleb is setting himself up as this you know you know captain or you know general or whatever and she's not interested in any of that so. Uh, She's uh, she joined the council to try and like uh, uh, head that off. Uh, she's sneaky, so, you know, because she 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 uh, because of the thief background and uh, the thing that she knows about Caleb. Uh, if how old uh, do we know how old Caleb is? Um. I'd say he's about because the thing is there were probably adults with you, but this was kind of crewed by a group of teenagers as well. That's kind of why his turn was just a bit more shocking. Because I think he's probably around the same age as grandma. Okay. Or just a bit older. So I remember uh, back when I was in the gang, that one of his one of the he he was one of the uh, the the people in a, a rival gang. You know, he he used to run with a rival gang uh, where we came from. Uh, I, I, sorry, I, I forgot to mention. Tomer and me were discussing in chat uh, that we're our characters are twins. Uh, so. Uh, we've sort of teamed up as uh, uh, I, I I do you know uh, thieving I I, I I obtain things for you know uh, to to sell off and he he acts as the fence so we're a sort of uh, we're in a sort of uh, business arrangement in that in that sense. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I know Caleb from from uh, as as one of the the members of a rival gang. So I know that all of this uh, bullshit that he's uh, spewing about you know like heroism and you know honor or whatever, uh, you know he's he's putting himself up as this you know great leader. And I know he just came from the shit like me. So. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, all right, so we're going to take a five-minute break. Um, but in between that break, I want you all to think of... Oh, go on. You have anything else to say? Yeah, anything else you want to say about Kat? Actually, I should... I should. Did Tomer get oh. his? Yeah. I must, must have. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, him. Yeah, we... Yeah. Yeah, we start, yeah, we started off with Daring. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
But yeah, I'm gonna take a break. And in the meantime, think of a question to ask to the you know, on the character keeper, the character to your left, what question your character wants them to answer. And also uh, think of an authority figure who's kind of like a, rep a representative of the authority. Each of you is going to think of at least one. We might not see them all on screen. Now, they could be anything. It could be, you know, a, another person in Caleb's circle or, I don't know, a fleet of robots that he uses or uh, a psychic virus. I'm looking at the examples here. You don't have to use any of those. But, yeah, it's kind of like an authority figure that he uses to kind of spread out uh, but uh, we'll take five minutes we'll come and back this, uh, oh, go on. this is a question of the player yes or left yeah. about the character or about the situation okay. oh oh it's a question of the character of your character that they want the character on the left to answer okay so, oh, so, so, could you give an example? Sorry, like I, I wasn't sure if we were asking a question about their character or a question that, yeah. So, like, what's an example? Uh, example is like, what's your favorite thing to do with me now that, now that we know what we are? How do we stay friends after you were crueler than you've ever been to me? How did we become friends? Okay. Why am I the one? So it's like it's like a bonding question, like something that to do between the two characters. Yeah, you're not. You don't necessarily have to answer them. They're kind of like what frames scenes. Because right. there's two ways to frame a scene, either through a, a friendship question or an authority figure. So, so, and there are ways to embellish, like, yeah, your bonds between the char your characters. What do you want to do with me once we're free? Why am I the one you trust the most? Those sort of things. All right, cool. Uh, any more questions before we break? And so uh, just no, just something quickly for Robert. I mean, we can start the break already if if you need to. But Robert, did you did you need to know anything about my character? Like it sounds like you didn't hear some of the stuff. Does that help you? Yeah, I was I was still sorting out my own character. I think no, no, when, that's not a problem. Uh, so just real quick, uh, but you know, if you guys want to jump off to break, feel free. But just real quick, uh, Daring is uh, short and athletic. Uh, side braids with a little bit of leftover hair as a mohawk um lots of pockets and you know always like diy pockets does a lot of um you know figuring out his own stuff as far as like engineering fix it hacker type stuff but is not trained in any way um uh very smart but part of the the outrage like he he doesn't express his emotions so he just kind of builds up you know, and then eventually will sometimes lash out. And part of that comes from the fact that uh, I saw, um, you know, our parents die at the hand of Caleb, but Caleb didn't see that. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, I was hidden. Um, and then later Caleb came to me and said that they died in some accident. So like, I know he's lying. I know, you know, he's responsible, um, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Okay. And maybe like I, you know, like I, I was probably orphaned in a slightly different way than you were. Maybe you kind of like quickly found a different path with the whole Fagan thing or something. Um, maybe you were already over there when our parents got killed. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. So I, oh go on, go on. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure figure stuff out as we play it. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Sounds good. All right. I, I will be back at 20 past, but feel free to come back at 22. Hmm. I'm not going to add five minutes from now. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So five minutes. BRB. Sorry. Okay.
I'm back. Welcome back. Okay, cool. So everyone's back. Uh, David's just uh, eating at the moment. Okay, so how play works in misspent youth? Like I said, it's a scene by scene structure. Most sessions are seven scenes altogether. Uh, we might not make it to scene seven. I'd like to at least make the scene five because that's where things go bad. Um, <laughs> so, but scene one is relatively. It's a well, I would say cozy start off, but like, yeah, each scene kind of has like a heading and kind of what to expect to see. And scene one is called What's Up. This is basically, you know, kind of the opening shot of an episode and seeing what everyone's all doing together to hang out, what the relationships are like. And each scene is going to be framed by either a friendship question or an authority figure. And... And, and we're going to take turns per scene, kind of like picking who gets to frame what scene. And uh, actually, I, I'm curious enough, Tomer, when you ran this, did you just uh, leave it up to someone to frame a scene, or did you pick someone? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. I think I probably played around with it a little bit. I mean, it, I, so I ran it, uh, I've run it twice, once on the gauntlet, and then I played it once before that, and it was only two players. And we were very kind of like loose about it. So I, I, I can't, honestly, at this point, I don't even remember how, how we structured it, <laughs> but. Um... Oh, that's fine. Uh, the book kind of suggests that whoever wants, whoever basically wants to frame a scene first, I'll try to make sure everyone gets to frame a scene by the end of this session in a way. Cause if we're gonna go up to five scenes, everyone gets to do it, but yeah. Uh, scenes are framed either around um, the friendship question or a authority figure. Just mentioned doesn't necessarily have to be Caleb, but it's kind of like a visage of his control. It could be his person or a system of control. Um, I think some people are still putting in their question. Ooh, there's, some, <laughs> there's some enticing questions there. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to put in those questions anyway, and then and then we'll kind we'll kind of see which question people think would be like a good way to open up this scene. Because again, this scene is kind of like just the opening. We get to see all the characters together, what they're doing in their everyday lives. Right. Hmm. Again, if you have any questions, shout them out. So basically, the person who frames the scene, they get to pick whether it's a it's a friendship question or authority figure, and also what the first five seconds of the scene is with input from everyone else obviously but um actually yeah who wants to kind of jump in and pick what what the frame is we don't have any authority figures at the moment and that's a, that's something y'all can come up with at the moment so i think we'll just pick a friendship question because that's easy enough okay i'll i'll start 
What book did I give you that Caleb wants to destroy? And what does it mean to you? Cool. So what do the first five seconds of this scene look like? Uh, I think this is... I think this is me going through the corridors, coming up to the bunk spaces that people share, uh, coming up to a bulkhead and knocking on it and basically watching as some of Caleb's goons you know, walk past and then uh, disappearing inside to the, to the room that we've got laid out as our, as our meeting place. Cool. Uh, what's everyone else doing in the meeting place? Uh, let's start with... Oh, this is the point where I have to remember character names. Cool. Let's start with Moon. What are you doing in the meeting place? Oh, go on. I, I did have one little bit before there. Yeah, go on. Okay, and I close the door. Okay, is everyone re okay? Is everyone ready for the lesson? And I, I reach in, I reach in, and I take out a book. <laughs> what's what's everyone's doing in the meeting? Oh yeah, what's everyone's doing in the meeting when Grandma comes in with their next lesson in the meeting place? Uh, and Okay. Sorry, I'm sitting in one of the, the chairs. I think they're like these uh, sort of swivel style chairs. Uh, and um, I'm just sort of got my feet up on the chair and just sort of swinging back and forth. And it, you know, it's like yeah, waiting for whatever to happen. I think um, in, in one corner we see instead of a chair, we see like a bunch of, you know, like uh, equipment and, and uh, you know, machinery stuff and like little odds and ends, like just a big pile of it, right? And we don't even see uh, daring, but uh, as soon as, um, as grandma says, hey, are, you know, is everyone ready for the lesson? We see a little, like a hand pop up with like a little thumbs up and then it goes back down and so even though it doesn't look like Darren's paying attention kind of or there, like Darren's totally 100% ready for that. But, you know, he's also busily doing whatever he's doing back there. Right. Moon is um, whatever learning materials um, have been that grandma brought. Moon is kind of like carelessly leafing through them and tossing them around. Uh, with his back turned. I, I think oh. I brought, I think I brought menus from the ship canteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and um, <clears throat> um, Wings is just um, he's well, he would be sitting in the chair between. Um, um, between uh, Cat and Moon, except he's standing behind it and just kind of leaning on the back of the chair. He's got like an enamel mug with, you know, some form of coffee or coffee substitute in it. Um, he's, he's sipping. Um, when when Grandma actually comes in, he will kind of get sit in the chair. Um, cool. Uh, Grandma, what's the lesson then? I think it's just basic uh, reading and writing. Uh, obviously, we come from a, a place in the middle of a civil war. And I, I, I think the level of literacy amongst the children is all over the place. So it's literally just to help go through the lessons. I think I'm trying to encourage the rest of the characters to basically uh, help other people to, to actually uh, pass on the uh, teaching and pass on what they know to the others. So it's almost uh, going and actually teaching them how to teach. Mm. Uh, is it is it just all just the five of you, or is there other people in this place? Sorry, uh, is, yeah, is there anyone else here besides the five of you, or is it just the f uh, the four There's of you? There's younger kids, right? That's the impression I got. Yeah, in the scene specifically. In, in this scene, I think it's just us here at the moment. Uh, we're, we're hiding away from somewhere where Caleb can't see, so we can actually have this discussion. Can we throw in, like, maybe one other kid um, who we haven't defined yet, and we can kind of see who they become later? Ooh, like, someone also someone young. very young. 
Ooh, it's kind of like a younger, it's not your teenager, someone you want to in, maybe you're thinking of inducting into the council or someone you trust or just a kid. Uh, it has to be someone we trust if they're here, right? Like we may not yeah. trust them, you know, in a wise way, but maybe someone who's like 12 or something, right? Like they're, they're very young, you know? Yeah. Uh, if that's fine with everyone else. That's cool. Uh, since grandma, since you, you're kind of the mother figure, oh, who's this kid? You mo you're probably the one who knows him the best. I think, we, I think this kid's Jinx. Jinx. Can you write that in the chat so I can yes. note that down? And uh, they call Jinx by the others. Uh, we try to avoid using the name because they're incredibly un unlucky and quite clumsy, and uh, they tend to they tend to make a lot of mistakes. So I try and keep them close to basically protect and help if I can. <laughs> I think uh, when you pull out this lesson, Jinx kind of very everyone here. Everyone, it's a closed room. Jinx kind of loudly sighs and is like, uh, "What's what's all this? What what are we doing?" A very long time ago, oh my God. men not much, men and women much older and smarter than us wrote all of their knowledge into books and tablets and computers. The key to knowledge, the key to knowledge is to understand the writing first. Yeah, but what Caleb says is right, right? Caleb, Caleb is many things, but he will not always be with us. Grandma is dealing in the secret knowledge of how to scribble chicken Alfredo. <laughs> uh, Jinx eyes widen and it's like, ooh, what's chicken Alfredo? Four dollars ninety-five. <laughs> and I, I point to the number. Can you write four dollars ninety-five? Uh, what's what's a dollar? <laughs> it it was a measure of money. Do you know what money is? Um, it's a... They're like pieces of paper? Not just paper. When you when you trade with an older boy for something, or an older child for something, what do you use? Um, I know Juniper likes nuts. Not food nuts, but the things that's on the walls. Uh, I know that Mr. Finch, uh, he likes, um, he likes pieces of paper. I don't know why. He keeps asking me like, oh, Jinx, you know what happens to everyone. And I'm like, yeah, of course I know what happens to everyone. I'm Jinx, everyone loves me. And he's like, yeah, we're looking for these, he's, we're looking for these things called, you know, you know what a book is? And I'm like, no, I don't know what a book is. I'm only seven. And and he, and he was like, well, these kind of like pieces of paper, they're stuck together. And they, they have these weird scribbles. And I know you're a good boy, Jinx. Or well, actually, what's uh, Jinx's uh, pronouns? Uh, I think Jinx is, I think Jinx is a boy for use of reference. Okay, cool. So, so he, 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 he. Okay, cool. So. Yeah, Mr. Finch is kind of like, yeah, yeah, so I'm looking for these, and they'd be, and, you know, they'd be really worth it if you can tell me, and 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 I'm like, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, of course, Mr. Finch, you're, you're cool, I guess. This is when I, um, like, I lean over my, like, row of crap, and I throw a couple of, like, nuts and bolts, and a piece of paper, like a crumbled piece of paper, at uh at jinx right uh like a bunch of them so that's all like all over the place and i say don't you dare don't you dare give it to to mr finch you find a book you give it to grandma and then i duck back down under and i'm like you can keep all that give it to your friends 
Moon takes the crumpled piece of paper, flattens it down on the table, and and takes a pen and writes "screw off" on it. <laughs> Give that to Mister Juniper. Ah, uh, Darren, oh, Darren, stop being a little, and uh, stop throwing stuff at the boy. <laughs> Again, there's probably like a little hand that goes up with a thumbs up. Or maybe it's like <laughs> a little bit of like that. Okay. I you. Oh, go on. You. You. <laughs> I just realized what you're doing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> PG-13 after all. Yeah. Oh, my God. I should invest in that ah, next time. Okay, uh, it's, a, it's a free app on Android, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I think the lesson goes as kind of going. I think Jinx's eyes kind of widen um, uh, when that the nuts and bolts. Um, but the thing is, it, it, I think he mentions offhandedly that, oh, yeah, when Mr. Finch gave me, when he, Mr. Finch, which is like, I don't know why he calls him Mr. Finch. You know, his his name is Tom, but he's like, oh, I'm Mr. Finch now. I'm old and, and stuff. And Caleb trusts me or whatever. Uh, he gave me a weird hug for some reason. He kind of patted me on and he kind of he kind of looks into his pocket and oh, I guess he left something here. And uh, Daring, you, you kind of recognize this as a tracking beacon uh that's on him and uh because dramatically this is this seems like this would happen when he pulls it out uh, there's a loud sharp knock on your door and i and uh I, and i, I reach up i go i turn off the light uh, you hear a loud, brusque voice going, "Look, I'm I'm knocking as a courtesy. I can just open these doors all I want, but I'm giving you the chance to come out, come out first. If if you open the door, this will look much better on you. And I think it's time to explain because we're not entering struggle, which is the conflict resolution of this game. So." Basically, we I'm going to declare an objective and you're going to declare a hope, all you youthful offenders. Um, hope, uh, hope is what you, they're basically goals. They're kind of open-ended in the scene, but that's what we're aiming for. So my objective as the authority is to confiscate whatever books you have left remaining. And what's your hope? And, and an important thing, and I'm glad you said that because I, I kind of wanted the other side of that. I, I definitely want to. Uh, uh, so when, what we don't have to do is we don't have to say, well, we're trying to hide our books because if you lose, we hide our books, right? So we get to try to say what our objective is, which might be different than that. Um, so like I, one example that I can think of is, you know, our hope is that, um, you know, we hide enough of our our shit or the way this place looks. So it just, it doesn't look like this is our hideout, right? And they're not able to discover that this is our hideout. Like that's one objective we could do, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, does anybody have any other thoughts? It could be something else. My hope is that we send them a message. Ooh. <laughs> My hope. Yeah, I like that. My hope is I'm going to take the tracker, I want to take the tracker, put it in a single book and have them confiscate it and have it lead me back to where the rest of the books are stored. Hmm. And keep uh. in mind, I think one, one important thing, right, uh, Leandro, is like all of us decide on one hope that we, as a team, right? It's not like we have individual ones. So we're kind of discussing this, but it's just like one thing we're trying to do, right? Yes, I'm gonna double check that, but I'm, I think that's right. Yeah, you all have kind of your hopes you're all going for as we get into the struggle. Yeah, oh, wait, yeah, no, 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 the YOs all decide on their hope, 
and they get it if they win the struggle and I lose my objective, which is to confiscate your books. And oh. yeah. So, um, oh god. So yeah. I think it is open ended. Don't, don't don't go for like a specific hope. Like I like the idea of you putting the tracker in the book, but it's kind of like it should be like part and parcel of what you're all hoping to achieve. Okay. I'm, and it's I still something it. you can do in the scene, even if it's not like our team hope. You can still be like, oh, I throw the tracker in the book, and we can see if it's successful or whatever. I, in that case, then, I hope to expose the location of uh, where the other books have been stored by them. That could be part and parcel of sending a message, um, as, um, as Moon said. Uh, Daring, you you fine with that? So I um, well, I like the idea of um, I mean, I definitely like the idea of the tracker and the book thing, but I, I love the idea of the hope being the sending the message part. Maybe you know, part of that is like if we've booby trapped, like you know, enabling a booby trap that we have on the place, right? So sending a message that you know, it, it's not like they could just walk in and yeah, they, like to watch their step, right? Like we're we're not just some, I don't know. Something to be trifled with. Okay. Um, if you're if you're fine with yeah, we might. Are you, are you going with send the message or part of it is like finding yeah finding the location. I think that should be part. That could be part of that. You be good with that. And yeah. also the 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 okay. um, the tracking the books thing. Like like we said, like if you as part of the scene, one of the things you're trying to do can be putting the the bug in a book, and then um, uh, like that can that can inform what the next scenes are about, right? Like it doesn't we don't have to succeed necessarily in the whole thing for that to be like an ongoing part of the story, right? That's brilliant. Okay. Okay, so that's your hope. Send a message to the authority. Uh, the my objective is to confiscate your book, deprive you of your your contraband, and and okay. So there are general ends, not specifics. I've declared objective, declared a hope. Um, let's all go to the conflict map uh, on the ta on the table, and. To send a send a message. Oops. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's a hope. Um, objective is to deprive you of your reading material and, and learning. Okay, so we've got that, and and also we have role for party. Uh, we are going to be rolling. You are going to be rolling two d six. So what's going to happen is, as the lights are off, you're all sitting in the dark. Except I don't know, maybe some flashing lights from machinery and whatnot. Um, Finch is knocking and is going and is going. Like I said, courtesy. I'm going to open this blast door in five seconds, and everything better be in, you know, in shape there. But don't even try to lie to me. Kids, even though he's 16, you know he's 16. Um, you better not be lying to me uh, once I get in there. And so that's what I'm pushing to do. Who's going to stand up to him? So can I we generalize stand. our oh, hope to send a message and then have it be open ended? Yeah, yeah, the hope is meant to be open ended. Okay, so who's gonna stand up to him? I will stand. <laughs> okay, so instead of telling me what to do, you have to roll first. That's the, the tricky thing with this system. Is, so you're gonna roll 2d6. Okay, so I'm going to roll for your party. I will choose, my color is gray, so I'm gonna choose some kind of like, what color dice? I'll choose white dice. And then I will roll two of those. And I get a three. All so right. I'm going to so go to the conflict map. And I'm, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this little, uh, 
this thing, my little square next to my character name over to the three area like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what happened here is that uh, Daring has claimed the number three. So that means whoever roll, if people roll in the next time and they land in three, you win the struggle. That's how this works. Uh, I never have to roll dice, so I now get to claim some numbers later. If you all roll and you land on numbers I've claimed, I win the struggle and you lose unless you sell out a conviction. Speaking of conviction, okay, so Daring, you're, you stand up, you're standing up, um, well, not literally, but what's the conviction you're gonna use? Um, I'm going to use uh, my conviction of um, smart. And I have already uh, set up a little um, booby trap so um, I'm gonna go uh, try to enable that. And that's a booby trap that's gonna be set when somebody comes through the door. Um, uh, and um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so, so he's counting five. And when he's on to one, he, the blast doors open, but what does the booby trap do? Um, it's not really all that clever, but it's it's just like there's a bunch of stuff above the door, and uh, the, there's like a shelf there. And um, if I like, it's totally all hard wired, and and you know, like you can see me like flip one or two uh, little levers. And so when the door will be open all the way, like a whole bunch of heavy equipment fall down on whoever walks through it. Right, so we know to kind of like stand back or go through like side passages to try to get out of here or whatever. Um, so they can see me like enable all that and then I take a step back and we're waiting to see them kind of walk through. Okay, yeah, I think all of that crap falls on Finch, who's kind of like, he's, all that crap falls on I me. Mean, he's spluttering, he's like, what the fuck? And it's dark as well, so he can't see properly, but you can hear him shouting. Uh, that ah, oh, this isn't gonna end well. You, you, he's sounding some very melodramatic. You've, you've shot the first shot. Uh, it's gonna blow back on all your faces. And he's kind of wildly grabbing, and he's kind of getting closer to Jinx as he's kind of very hardly flailing as he enters the room. Um, who and I'm going to claim the number seven because that's what I do first. Uh, in my turn. Yeah, I can just mark. Uh, you know, I'm gonna mark. I'm gonna mark black on top there. I'll take that color. Bag. All right. So I'm gonna claim number seven. So if you roll on number seven, you're going to fail the struggle. Uh, so who's who's standing up next? I'll say if you've stand up before, let someone else take a turn. So uh, who's? Yeah, one? sure. I will. Um, All right. So, all right. You're gonna have to roll dice first. <laughs> yep. Sure thing. That's a 10. Oh, all right, so you claim that number. And what are you doing and what conviction are you using? So um, I think I'm going to use my uh, call here. Um, and um, I'm going to just like walk up to, uh, the lights are on the Fritz Finchy. Um, are you okay? Did you, did you knock something over? Um, I'm, I'll come and find you. Just try not to move around too much, okay? Um, and I'm going to sort of um, um, move towards where I think he is and sort of just, you know, put like an arm on his shoulder and offer him a hand. Say, are you all right? That uh, sounded like you took a bit of a fall there. <laughs> I think I, I, when he hears your voice, because, you know, you're trusted, you're nice. It's kind of like uh, he is kind of like... <laughs> Wings? The hell are you doing here? Ah, don't tell me you're, you're part of this entire cabal. Look, I've been tracking these bozos for weeks. I tell you, Wings, weeks. Uh, they've been spreading a lot of really not true stuff. He's becoming less articulate as more of the stuff on him kind of drips around. And but he's he's kind of resisting your flailing. 
and he's kind of reaching around and he's kind of like and it's kind of like clearly they have aims for us wings they're trying they're they're trying to plan something and he's, he's pulling out a communicator and he's and he's kind of like yeah i think you can everyone can see it because it's bright it's cutting in the darkness and i am going to claim a number and the number is three uh oh wait no you no tree's already been claimed sorry 11. Yeah. um yeah I'm gonna turn that back okay so he's about to reach his communicator you're all still in this room and and the thing is you can use your conviction to like placate him or do whatever you know but who's gonna stand up next Uh, I will, sure. Cool. Okay, so roll 2d6. And I will say it's kind of rad, like when you're playing this at a table, in theory, you're supposed to stand and go, I will stand. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Eight, all right. So you claim that number. Okay. All right. So what do you do and what conviction are you using? Uh, so let me just check my character sheet. Player stuff. Uh, damn it. Okay. Uh, sorry, my screen's all. Okay, so I'm just gonna get. I'm gonna use pride. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm 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 gonna basically like uh, get a uh, yell and get in his face, <laughs> uh, uh, so he's too distracted to actually uh, use the communicator. Okay, yeah, so what do you yell into his face? Hey, look, man, I don't know what you think you're, uh, you, you, you're doing here, but uh, we're all just having a, a quiet time, just hanging out and having, you know, ha having a laugh. That's, there's nothing in Caleb's rules against that, I'm pretty sure. I think he he's distracted enough. He's gonna he hears you. He's still holding a communicator, but he's kind of like, I'm sure there are rules for pulling for dumping stuff on people like me. Don't you know who oh, I am? I you should be more careful where you're going then. What are you all doing in the dark anyway? Like who who has fun in games in the There's dark? No chef. There's a lot of faulty systems. I'm pretty sure the lights are just turned off. In fact, I demand someone turn up the turn on the light. And he's kind of moving towards the direction to, of the light switch. And it's gonna like if if you're just having fun in games and you're not trying to hide anything, and so I can just turn on the lights. Uh, that seems perfectly reasonable. And he's gonna move to turn the lights. Uh, <laughs> who's gonna stand up next? I will. <clears throat> All right, so roll your roll your dice, and that would be a six. A six. Um, no one's. Oh Jesus, it's filling up. <laughs> okay, so oh yeah, I should have claimed the number. Uh, but, 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 sorry, apologies. Uh, you can claim that six, and hey, you've also claimed the seven, haven't you? Yeah, I, yeah, no, yeah, no. I started off by claiming the seven, okay. and then. Ah, here we go. I need. I'm going to claim the the two. There are rules for this. I'm not just picking a number. I just had to look them up, uh, which numbers I claim. So yeah, what? So what do you do, and what's your conviction you're using? Uh, grab. Uh, I'm I'm using uh, caring, uh, altruistic. Okay. What do you do? Pinch. 
is, is that you? <laughs> oh, Grandma. Um, what what happened? I hear the ban. Just all this junk and is that fluid? Oh. I, I, I'll step over and uh, he, he feels me basically touching his head and uh, oh that seemed that must be so painful. Come on, out outside, out in the light. I would we need to have a look at this. That must hurt so much. <laughs> now don't yeah. don't give me any of that. I know that you want, and you do what I say. Come on, out in the light. I wish to see this now. Grandma! Now, you little... Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, you drag him out. He's in disheveled state. He's, he's, he was wearing, okay, oh God, what was he wearing? I've, I'm imagining him as a Dickensian orphan look, looking type. He's got a silly top hat that's all been crushed by all this stuff. He's, he's got his greasy long blonde hair. He, he has what looks like stubble, but you can see it's just dirt painted on. And he's just like, look, grandma, I, it's fine. It's just, I'm sure there was a prank there. And look, I was called in. I, you know, Caleb gave me this important task, Grandma, and I'm here to fulfill it. And I'm sorry, but like, I need to see what's in there. I've been, I've been tracking things, you know. Like, he looks at you and it's kind of like, you know, you know what, you know what Caleb's like when, when he's, when his demands aren't met. You know, I need, to, I really need to find this. And <laughs> what, what is it you're looking for? We're looking for, and yeah, you can see his bravado is just draining. We're looking, we're looking for the rest of the books. I need to bring back a book to him. Otherwise, otherwise I, mm, and he's kind of looking away. He's looking at the room and says, just let me in there, grandma. You know, just, just. What, what, just is, what is he threatening to do? He's. He had a he had a stasis pod, uh, a few of them, working, and he threatened to put me back in there. Oh, darling, no! So I so I need to bring back a book, Grandma. That's I I need I really need to please. I'll say right now that's what I have, the I have one. I have so few left. But. I'm saying now that's where the authority, which is now not Finch, but the overall authority is pushing. They're gonna threaten uh, poor Mr. Finch here unless he comes back with something. Unless you figure out a way out of this, uh, who's gonna stand then? I guess we have one more person left. And you're grabbing another number, right? Uh, yes. Hold on. You have grabbed, and I've grabbed 11 and 2. My next number to grab is. 12. All right, so who's going to stand? We have one more person who hasn't yet. Yes, so w what do I roll here? Oh, you roll 2d6. You There's the link to the roll for a party. Uh -huh. uh, do you have it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yeah, roll 2d6. Just 2d6, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's an eight, right? Eight, yes. Fab. Okay, so well, you've landed on a on a a youthful offender, so that means you win the struggle, and <laughs> yeah. So thank God you don't have to sell out anything. That's good. So what? Uh, so you get to narrate how the scene kind of how this struggle concludes using the conviction that was on that. So like, it doesn't mean you have to use specifically Katia's pride. <coughs> But like maybe something you'd learn from Katya through their pride or whatnot. Um, yes, but anyway, you win the scene. So note that down. Scene one, win for the youthful offenders. Okay. And Katya was claiming that uh, oh, we can do. Caleb doesn't have any rules against uh, what we're doing here. Yeah. 
and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of imagine that um, Grandma is um, leading Finch to the door, and um, somehow as that's happening, like uh, a couple of us hide, um, whoever, anybody, I guess we've all revealed ourselves, right? So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, when the door opens, there's a bit of light coming in anyway, but it was still. Yeah, yeah. Dark. So at the last minute, somebody um, hits the. Uh, yeah, I, I think Grandma is leading them out, him out, um, and I'm imagining somebody he hits the light spot at the last minute and flips around to see what we're really doing, and we're playing Yahtzee. Something like that. <laughs> and, uh, there are no books to be found because we hid them under the board or something like that. Okay, I think Finch sees that, and I think he kind of he looks over your shoulder, Grandma, and he sees you all playing Yahtzee. Who's winning? You don't have to answer that. That's a silly question. <laughs> I'm definitely winning. So it's... <laughs> okay. Yeah. All okay. right. That's fair. You can claim that. Can we just say that Jinx is losing? Oh. <laughs> Taking advantage of a seven-year-old. How dare you? You're winning back your nuts and bolts, clearly, Darren. <laughs> but I think Finch sees that and he's kind of and he he's regained a bit of his bluster and he's kind of walked in. And it's kind of like he's but he sees all that and he's kind of sighs and he's kind of like <sighs> If you're just playing Yahtzee, you can you don't need to. You don't need to all do all this. Like, come on. Why, why, are you, why all the mess? You don't. He's looking sad now, and he's like, "You're, you're, just, you're just thumbing your nose at Caleb, and you don't want to do that." Did we uh, did we plant? Did we give him a book to take back and do like a plant? I was just about to. Yeah. Yeah. Finch. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. It is, uh, there's so many people who would just do not have good intentions around here. So many of the young ones, they grab their mouths off to me. Want a chance to be together and just. And relax. Just, just I, be ourselves. Just play. I Is know, it? Grandma. Look, I look. I, I want that as well. But it's, it's either this or the stasis pod. I hate to do this. I'll walk over to my my bag, my satchel, I'll open it up, I'll take out a, a, a ragged uh, a ragged version of the Hunger Games with half the pages missing. <laughs> uh, Finch kind of lights up. He's already edited it, and I'll hand it over to him. And yeah, Finch takes it reverently, it's kind of like, and he's kind of nodding very vigorously, it's like, I, I I owe you one then, Grandma. I, I owe all of you. Um, th thanks so much. But yeah, and he kind of puts it in his satchel. He has a satchel now. I've decided that. And he's kind of like, yeah, no, no, thanks. But no, okay, no. Uh, yeah, but, and he kind of whispers kind of like, but look, it's not just going to be me. And he looks at wings and he looks at all of you like this. You're gonna hear it now. People going back into the pods. You probably hear more of that soon enough. And, and there's no one stopping him, you know? Too many people just think he's so great, but mm, I don't know, I have to get this book back. Thanks thanks again. Thanks so much. And he doffs it, he doffs his top hat jesus christ and he uh 
he runs off. So, uh, and I think like one of the things that he was trying to do was to take our, like our valuable books, right? Yes. And, I, and there was a character question of um, what book did grandma give me that Caleb wants to destroy? Yes. Right? So I think like part of the scene, you know, when he came in and, you know, like after setting the trap is me running back to my little uh, hidden area and I'm unscrewing as fast as I can, like these little bolts that, you know, for like a panel that's on the floor and sh taking a book that I have up here and like hiding it down there. So in case he comes in and, you know, is able to, you know, uh, in case they wanted to come in and take our shit, like this book uh, said something like, um, you know, uh, I think maybe it's like a ship repair manual, right? Um, so it says like ship repair manual for sector B7, da, 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 you know, all this stuff. And I'm quickly like sticking it under the, the floorboard and then like screwing those things back up, right? Like if we hadn't done that in time, that would have been one of the, the things that they would have taken. All right. Okay, I think uh, unless you want to play Yahtzee some more, I think that's the end of that scene. <laughs> uh, Jinx, do you let Jinx with all, oh, you, know, you know, don't take the nuts and bolts away from a seven year old. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, all right, so I'm gonna reset the conflict map back to normal. And so basically, that's how conflict resolution works in Misspent Youth. And we are gonna go to the rest. And the next scene is called. Oh, sorry, it's called Fight Back. And basically, this is the click you're going to take on the problem. The problem is there's now this threat of stasis pods to anyone who kind of crosses Caleb. And this scene is you all kind of like fighting back and you know, come up with kind of like the big question of this entire story, of at least this episode. So who wants who wants to set this scene? Like what question? I'll say again, like the pre like what we did with the struggle. If you've set the scene before, uh, the next scene someone else will get to. So I've already had mine, so for us. Okay. Yeah, it's either the questions or invent an authority figure. Like Finch is clearly not an authority figure, the, the poor lad. But if, if no one come, if no one has any idea, if no one wants to do it, I can put forward another one if you'd like. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, open to somebody who hasn't done. Like I've played it yeah. before, so like if anybody else wants to do it. <laughs> It's oh. if we're using a question, it's the other character's person's question of our character. It's the one that we're using. Um, hold on. I oh, think. Did oh, I get that? Did I get that wrong? I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. I think. Um, no, the player gets to decide like what friendship questions in the scene. It doesn't have to be yours. Oh, okay. So you're going to choose what question frames the scene, and then what's the first five seconds of the scene. Yes. So uh, I want to know, OK, and correct me if I'm doing this wrong. I want to hear Wings's answer to what crazy or illegal stunt that impressed Cat. Ah, okay. What's the first five seconds of this scene? Uh, oh, do I get to know the answer to that before I kind of frame? We'll find out in play. That's oh, we find out in play, okay. Yeah, we frame, that's, that question frames what the scene is kind of, kind, of, kind of going to be about or what you're using to fight back against the authority. 
So okay. like, yeah, frame what what scene you're all in, and and thing is, everyone kind of has to be in the same scene. Okay. Uh, so we're in the um, a part of the ship, like uh, those in here who've read or seen Ender's Game. There's like a recreational part of the ship that doesn't have gravity and we are recreating playing some kind of uh, game in this anti-gravity part of the ship uh, trying to burn off steam I guess the energy is we're trying to ignore what had ha has happened but the energy is going to spill over and we're going to strike back I guess is what I'm envisioning here all right. How is and everyone faring? Oh, go on. No, go on. In the first five seconds, there is an announcement from the authority that really pushes us over the edge. Okay. So, before this announcement, how is everyone faring in zero gravity? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we? What are we trying to do again, Mike? I, I didn't quite catch. <clears throat> We're playing a game in zero gravity with the intention of distracting ourselves from what's going on. Maybe I propose, you know, let's just play a game, forget about what happened or whatever. And, uh, yeah, this is a zero gravity game. We're bouncing off walls and so on. Are the walls here padded? Are the walls padded? Yes. I, you know, I think the pads have worn off. This is an old ship, so it's pretty brutal. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, how's everyone doing in zero gravity? Yeah, my grandma's having problems. She's got very long, straight hair. And in zero gravity, that's just like a Medusa everywhere. And she's <laughs> cheap. There's lots of beeps and beeps and beeps as she keeps on trying to tie it up and the actual little uh, bit of uh, boot lace that she's got to do that keeps on coming loose and it keeps on going everywhere. Keeps on you know, playing the game, getting in people's face and she's just like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, no, uh, no, sorry, no, ah. Oh. <laughs> um... Wings, you must. You're a pilot. You must do well in zero gravity. Yeah, I was going to say. I think he's quite used to uh, to being in zero g, so he's he's doing quite well at this. Um, um, I'm imagining some sort of like you know three dimensional basketball. Well, I suppose basketball is three dimensional, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, I think he's like bouncing off the wall and sort of does like a, throws the ball and. Scores a, scores a basket sort of thing. <laughs> uh, Daring, how are you doing? That's a good question. I, um, I, I don't think Daring is uh, particularly good at this um, physically, but I think He's like scoping out this, like he's able to kind of judge where people are going to be at a certain time. Like, I think we can see his mind working, right? Um, so uh, that probably like in the in the beginning of the scene, there's a couple of like, we could see Daring get mashed against the wall once or twice and uh, in a not very graceful way. But then we can see him like timing something and like trying to get a hold of like, you know, a ball in a weird way or something. <laughs> Uh, Who are we okay. playing against? Hmm. I quite like the idea of this place having a hollow projector, and it's just, you know, just a very, very low grade one, but someone's actually reprogrammed it, so they've all got Caleb space. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, I think while you're playing, all this trying to blow off some steam, so to speak, to quote Commando. Um, um, you hear this crackle amongst the and the hollow projector, and 
it's a the Caleb players kind of disappear for a moment and they're replaced by Caleb's face who's and you but for a brief second you only hear him say have you got sector seven sector of what the manual was saying have you got sector fixed and then the hologram disappears and the Caleb players are back and then but you can feel them fritzing at the moment and then you hear a you hear something over the intercom kind of going uh on the tannoy going all all residents of the ship which we need to name all residents of the ship are to avoid uh sector 4 g the the sector that was in the manual which i sorry i forgot the, the actually all all residents are to avoid uh that sector we're doing repairs there and and please um disregard all anomalies that are that are happening and and as you keep playing this game you see more of these anomalies kind of like the what you can clearly tell is that the systems for the holograms are being they're being controlled or being affected in that uh from that sector and yeah so this isn't we're not in struggle yet because not because this is just me presenting this beat but so what are y'all how are y'all reacting to that what are you saying do we know do we know anything about the significance of that sector beyond the fact that it was in the manual? Um, well, from what you can get just from the scene, that that sector controls kind of hologram projectors. And I think if you read the manual, which I'd say uh, Grandma probably read a bit, but it, maybe it was flew over her head, that these projectors aren't just in specific areas of the ship. They're all over the ship. So if this... Sec if, if, yeah, if Sector 4F kind of gets fully repaired, they'll have control over this hologramic system. And it's not going to be something you can tamper with very easily. Mm. So we'll just let it, we're still kind of in free role play bit, bit but you, you kind of know all this information at the moment. I think as, um, as the holograms start to flicker, uh, we're in the middle of this game and uh, maybe uh, Moon is like supposed to be projecting uh, Darcy, and he just stops and stares at the flickering, gets kind of lost in it. Hmm. I think as the flicker happens, you. I take, you I take the distraction, oh. I take the opportunity during the distraction to get a point in. <laughs> uh, the The. I think there, it's more and more frequent. You're flickering. Caleb's face is coming back. It's like, get that repaired soon as his face comes in and out. The thing is with these scenes, you don't have to stay in this one location. You can move out of there, you know. So, oh, go on. Ash. Ash. Did you get those? <laughs> go, go and get the whole Put them up and run in again. <laughs> you need to know something about this. Grandma has a potty mouth. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Jinx learned a few from new few new words from you in the previous scene. All right. I, I, I don't tend to use it so much around the children, but around the older children, I just let loose. <laughs> Darcy, can you do something about this? Plug in the mainframe or something. And and so we're we're getting like the glitches, right? Mm -hmm. But is there like so? I'm just trying to make sure, like I understand what's happening. Like we're playing against these holograms, and then you know we've kind of hacked it so that Caleb's face is on them, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what what 
what do the glitches look like? Like what? Um, the players disappear, and you kind of see superimposed Wizard of Oz style, just Caleb's fa giant face. Uh, it's like he's looking at something, and he kind of, you know, whenever he pops up, he's always yelling at someone to get some to get this fixed up, to get this fix soon. And then maybe you hear a snippet that, like, um, and you hear someone, you hear someone in the background saying that, oh, these projectors they make good cameras as well. Right, um, and I think that's the part that you know uh, that clicks. Right, is that maybe somebody can spy on us? Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, what I do is I uh, out of one of my pockets, I've got like kind of like it looks like almost like a rubber band. So it's not a string, but it's kind of like this really thick but elastic band, and I quickly uh, whip it across my you know like i've got my goal right where people are trying to score on me and i kind of whip it across like some some little uh little bolts that are sticking out there to make sure no one can score while i'm not there and i jump off of that and then go to the um uh like push myself off toward the console like where i see like the little you know whatever console and i you know i just start like we see me hacking away at something like trying to figure some shit out right yeah i think you get this isn't a struggle yet. Uh, it's gonna it one's coming soon, but what's gonna happen is is yeah you hack you hack in the mainframe. And you can kind of you can tell that some systems are coming online uh, from sector four F, but they notice that in this in this. While you're hacking, they notice that some of these holographic holographic systems they're already online in a specific place, your place, and in the glitching. Again, you see, you hear Caleb's voice going. We're not sending that Finch. We're not sending Finch again. There, he's too soft. Send in, and then it glitches again, and and I think. You can kind of tell in the system, yeah, that the suddenly the programming or whatever mainframe coming from sector four F is trying to trying to access your area, kind of like your space. And I think that's I think that's where the struggle begins. And the objective of the authority is to turn on all to rest control of these holographic projectors so that they can use them as more cameras. And what's your hope, youthful vendors? Do we want to hope to reverse the polarity so that we can spy on them? Are you all down for that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, so yeah, D uh, David, while you were gone, the basically uh, daring is ha doing their hacking, and you're being hacked back. That's the long and short of it. <laughs> and okay, so let me go to this again. Of how the struggle starts. Okay, so I've cleared all the conflict maps and. I've said my objective, which is to turn on these holographic projectors. Um, and again, you don't have to stay in this one room. You can all kind of fan out and do stuff as you're going while, while Daring is doing this hacking. And that's probably me. Like, yeah, I'll probably yell out something like, it's going to take a minute. You know, I, I need somebody, like, I need a delay or whatever. Yeah, because the thing as well, the kind of systems are coming online around your sector, and and, <laughs> and I'm on it. Cool. So who's gonna? I was gonna ask who's gonna stand first. But... I think I think I'm gonna stand first to try and delay the uh, people coming in. Okay. Uh, roll two d six. That would be a three. Cool. All right. So you claim that three, and 
And you're gonna, what conviction are you using? Uh, I think I'm gonna use, uh, I think I'm gonna use my trusted. Okay. All right, so claim that three. Trusted is on there. And what are you doing? I, I think I'm going to be wandering through the corridors, and uh, I'm good, when we see the people, when we see the uh, members of Caleb's gang, I'm going to explain that uh, I've lost. I'm looking for one of the children. I can't find them, and try and actually get them to uh, to help me. Okay, I think the person you're talking to, uh, they're a very tall girl with kind of with glasses on, which is which is weird. They're tall, kind of lank, lanky but lean, kind of like a kind like an MMA fighter. Uh, um, you know her as uh, Sunflower, and she kind of looks at you and is like, "I understand, Grandma." But Caleb's ordered this place to to be cleared out. They were doing some tests here, and there's some there's some anomalies around here. And we totally understand that you're you're. And so so wait a minute. The children are, are loose here, and they're anomalies. No, we have to find them. We have to <laughs> find them. We cannot leave them here if the systems are not working properly. Uh, Sunflower kind of nods, and she nods to her two henchmen. Um, we we'll give them names later. They're they're mooks at the moment. They got they got they got hoods on. They 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 have big hoodies on. They're trying to look cool, and she, she kind of nods. So like I understand, Grandma. Uh, you can take um, uh, one the, the hench. Okay, yeah, we'll just call him hench, hench and Geralt, and they're gonna help you search for this missing child. Meanwhile, I'm gonna. I'm going to do as Caleb asked. I'm going to check out these anomalies. And she, before you can say anything, she kind of, she just strides off. And you're, you're stuck with these two. Um, so I'm going to claim seven. Uh, because, uh, fun fact, seven is apparently statistically the best number to get. And if no one gets it, I get it first. So, <laughs> uh, so kind of like, in, while well, you're in, in the gravity room, you can hear kind of the 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 fritzing is getting less, the glitches are getting less and less as Caleb's face kind of solidifies as he's just talking offhandedly to people, and you can kind of hear him. He's just saying orders. It's kind of like, yeah, I sent Sunflower down there. Uh, she's dependable. She'll root. She won't get turned by anyone who's by anyone who's being all who's spreading dissent. Uh, who's gonna stand next? And by the way, I love that. Like, like whenever we see changes in maybe the the way it's glitching, like um, you know, it's right after um, daring kind of like makes a change, right? So like maybe I hit something, like I'm trying something, and I don't know if it's going to work, and then we see this kind of like slight change in how the glitching works, right? So it, it, it looks like progress being made or something. Who knows? Okay, so I think. You can kind of, and also what you hear something like another snippet you kind of hear is, uh, "Wing, where's Wings? He really should be here. I'm getting tired of that slacker," uh, and cuts off again, and then he goes in and out. But uh, I think you notice kind of as the systems go on, you you'll notice da daring, and you can share this that the the cameras kind of track people or the holographic stuff spread around the ship and you can see you can see someone coming towards where you all are uh, who's gonna stand before somebody does one quick question do you grab another number too do you grab seven and another number no no that's the number I grab okay um, yeah I I will stand um, um, I, I've, I've got so I'm going to um, go first you have, yeah, you have to roll, roll first. first is, is exactly what I'm going to do. That's a four. OK, so you <coughs> claim four. Uh, what's, uh, so you claim that. And what's the conviction you're using? Um, I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to use pretty. Um, so I think I I kick down sort of to the, towards the door. 
and head in the direction that, that we think this person's coming from. Um, and um, um, yeah, you see, you see Sunflower. Uh, you know her. You're part of this. You're part of the same circle. And he, she sees you, and she's kind of like, "Wow, well, there you are, Wings. Feels like I haven't seen you in days." Yeah, I was. Um, I was actually just. Uh, I was wanted to find. Um, wanted to find where. Uh, where he wanted me. Actually, I was. I was going my way to. Um, I was on my way to check in with Caleb. Um, do you know where he's at? Um, and he's sort of going to flash oh. out a sort of big winning smile sort of thing. And uh... uh, Sunflower kind of, oh, you, always slacking around. Look, Wings, you're very important to the ship. You're the pilot. Without you, this whole heap could fall, could fall, you know, fall down a black hole or something. You need to be more careful, you know? Like, Caleb, Caleb's... He has a lot of patience, but there's only so much. You might want to go along and find him soon. Uh, of course, as I say, that um, where, do, you, do you know where he's at? I'll uh, I'll go and uh, go and speak to him right now, and um, then maybe we'll uh, catch up later as well. <laughs> oh, I always enjoy your silly tales, wings. Uh, Caleb's at Sector Four F. He's at the. He's at the main console. Weird tech they have there. They have this camera set up where you can just project to the entire ship. So it's like you don't even have to go to his weekly meetings anymore, which is fairly cool. It's fairly... Uh, yeah, that sounds... Saves uh, a lot of time. That sounds sounds pretty nifty. Uh, no, I'll go and check it out. Um, been a star as ever, Sunflower. Keep it up. Um, <laughs> and he's going to kind of, uh, yeah, head... head to where Caleb's at. Uh, I'll give you a chance to relay that info while you're heading towards there to the rest of the team, to the rest of the council, so they know. Yes, yeah, sure thing. Um, do, do we have some form of communications devices? Do you reckon, or um... mm, maybe, uh, maybe what kind of happens? You kind of stop her right in front of of the grab and the the room and yeah. maybe we we'll just say they heard that yeah the, that that's where cool. yeah caleb is cool so we've claimed which one did you claim again uh four and i think in the in the room you heard that that caleb is at sector four f kind of like that's where the that's where this machinery is being controlled and Soon, sooner or later, like again, there's like entire ten minutes of Caleb, of Caleb's face. Your fun basketball team is gone now. All the other is staring at his stupid face, um, which we've not defined yet. We'll define that next session because we're nearly for time. But yeah, you hear ad libbing, kind of like just chit chat. It's he's not monologuing. He is just saying like, you know, like we, you know. He, the weird thing is he's kind of going through each person on the ship and he has a scarily good memory of each person on the ship. It's kind of saying like, you know, we need to have more eyes on Katya, you know, after, after the stuff she did, it's, it's like, we can't really trust. It's hard to trust someone who was part of that gang, you know? And, Speaking of Katya, of course, there's her brother, and he's he's a bit smart. He's really smart. Like he could be useful, but and yeah, he's gonna he's kind of going through the list and checking it twice. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's kind of like, all right, we'll wait for. I think there's a moment where uh, he says something about me, right? And how mm. and maybe useful, and we see like the hologram of him on one of these, uh, you know, where one of these players was in the court. And I kind of stop my hacking for a second and just like spit through the zero G, and it goes like right through his one of his faces. <laughs> okay, so you so you 
so you kind of heard that uh yeah he's at sector 4f but now there's a knocking on uh, there's another knocking and again it's it's like weird courtesy and you hear sunflower's voice coming i'm giving you a courtesy can i come in not that i need to ask i guess uh who's gonna stand And also, I've claimed the number 11. That's the thing. You don't, that's the thing. There's suggestions. You don't have to like keep, you don't, you might, you can, you can, you have kind of have whoever wants to do a thing. If the dice lets you do it, you kind of have like just full control. You can say you sneak out of this room through some means that I've never heard of. You have, your exploits are you've got a derelict ship. You know, uh, there are ways in and out that even Caleb can't control. Uh, speaking of which, Kat, it sounds like you're about to stand. I, I, I was going to stand up. Oh, sorry. Is that all right? Cool. Uh, roll the dice. Okay, so that's an eight. All right, so you claim the number eight. Uh, what conviction are you using? And what are you doing? And what conviction are you using? So I'm going to use uh, uh, my MO, which is free runner of martial arts skills. Uh, so uh, I, I had in my head that, you know, when uh, when Darcy was uh, do it, started doing the hacking stuff, uh, Kasha was just sort of hovering in zero G behind him, uh, you know, looking over his shoulder. And then he's like, uh, he's got, you, 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 you says at one point, okay, I need to get this to the, the machinery in sector four, uh, four, four F, but, uh, 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 I can't, I can't do that from here. So, I, uh, you know, you get, he hands off a dongle sort of thing to me and I, uh, uh, booster pack to to one of the the walls. Open a hat. Open the hatch, uh, and then go through the crawl spaces to get to uh, to to that area, and you know just plug it into like a server uh, hub. Okay, so what's gonna happen when you plug that in? Is kind of like what's the dongle do? Is it gonna like let? Is it transferring control to? Uh, to... You'd have to ask the tech guy. <laughs> tech man, what do you do? Tech man, sorry. So yeah, Darcy, what does the dongle do? Like, does it, is it gonna transfer control? You think to you to you for a bit or? Um, where's the dongle from again? Uh, I would say it's from you. I would say it's kind of like maybe something you pass the cap and then they right. went off snuck into sector 4f because that's a success so yeah uh <clears throat> i'm gonna say um i'm gonna say maybe so i i think that part of the scene so remember like cat was standing next to um next to me right like early in the the beginning of the scene i think that's when i passed the dongle and we maybe like we saw like cat going through all these little you know, passages and stuff, right? This is kind of like the highlight reel of of some of Cat's like parkour stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so, basically, when when she gets to a place and plugs in that dongle, I think it it um, it kind of changes where it looks like we are, right in the ship. So you mm -hmm. know, maybe if like they were coming to get us at a certain place, suddenly it looks like, oh no, you, you know, there was like a glitch, like we're over somewhere else, right? So it's kind of like misleading, um, you know, whoever's after us. Okay, so I think when that dog comes in, yeah, that that happens. You get you kind of mislead them for a moment, though. Um, Caleb's face, who's kind of permanently replaced the players, it disappears. And it's replaced by another face, just for a split second. Uh, what does your brother look like, Moon? 
And, and when my you brother? See it, yeah. Because suddenly um, for a split second, he shows up. He's older. He's probably like 19. He would, or he would be 19. He's got long, shaggy hair. Uh, glasses. Long nose. Yeah, so... Yeah, he pops up for a, fit, for a split second, and and all he says is, Faye. And then he's replaced by Caleb again. And now the knocking is still there. Like, Sunflower is still there. <laughs> kind of like, all right, I'm coming in now. Just don't need to be enemies. And I'm go I think oh, I already claimed the number. It was the number 11. Oh wait, no, no, that's what I claimed last time. Uh, I'm claiming claim it again if you want. Hmm? You can claim it again if you want. No, hmm, nah, hmm, I could, but I don't. No, actually, if I want to, I couldn't. There are rules for this. I'm claiming the number twelve. Rules, rules. <laughs> I love. We'll just let people do whatever they want. You know, that's that's that. That's ridiculous. Um, okay, so that. Um, Instead of say, asking who stands up, I think, yeah, we have Moon. What do you do? All right. Actually, I wait, roll. no, actually. Yeah, yeah you roll first. first. Yeah, you roll first. Sorry. Darn, PBTA getting to me. That work. Oh, <clears throat> what'd you roll? Let me try again. I don't understand what... Uh... Um, I did a refresh, and it shows a 12. So, 12? OK. Yeah, sometimes you have to refresh it. But that, oh. that's going to hit uh, oh, that's, the other one. Yep. Oh, shit. OK, so you've got a choice now, Moon. Okay. Uh, you Yeah, you've hit the authority square, which means you've lost. But you can get an automatic win if you sell out a conviction of yours. Uh, okay. Selling out yeah, means acting like the authority. Being whatever is kind of the opposite of what that conviction you're selling out is. Uh, it could be any one of those. It could be any of the first four. You, you, this order is the last thing you set out. And if that's sold, sold out, that means the game ends. Okay. So, so you can win this. You can, you can accept the loss. But you can win this if you want to sell something out. That's what on the pregen stuff, when it says fast slash efficient or optimism slash cynical, the other side of the slash is the sold out part. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. So are you going to sell out or are you going to take the L? I'm definitely going to sell out. I'm looking at uh, the, the, uh, how they progress here when I sell them out. So mm. I think I'm going to, um, hmm. I'm going to sell out thrills to nihilistic. Oh, I shit. Think seeing my brother like that in the way that um, Caleb is, you know, messing with my brother has kind of pushed me past the edge. Um, All right. So you've now become nihilistic. What do you do with that? What do you do? I think yeah, I just. Oh, go on. Get, no, go ahead. No, no, go on. I was, I was just adding more stuff. Like, it's something. Yeah, it's something authority-like. That's what setting out means. Yeah, you've okay. lost a bit of that. You're acting more like the authority. Um. So what do you do? And it has. It will achieve us our objective. I think I'm gonna yes. smash through the door. And um, in the way that authority is uh, violent, I'm going to be violent and sort of with a total disregard um, for myself. Jesus. Smash through the door, um, hurling her. Um, what was her name? Sunflower. The sunflower. <laughs> oh, no. Hurling sunflower to the ground. Ooh, 
Well, the good thing is only Darcy was there to see it so far. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, okay, so what, what this does is that there are no more distractions. No one's coming after you at the moment. I think when Wings, when you go over to 4F, you see a bunch of people working in some designs, uh, working on some consoles and Caleb kind of look at the camera and he looks at you and kind of smiles and he said like, oh, Wings, glad, glad you're here to join us for once. But you can tell he's joking. It's kind of like, and he's kind of like, have you seen this uh, contraption we found in the ship? It lets us see all over. And, and once it's fixed, we have, we can see so much more in this ship. And that means that we'll have less on our back as we make our voyage. Isn't that good, Wings, don't you think? I, I mean, I suppose it's... Uh, if you really think it's it's important to keep such tight control on everyone, then yeah, sure, I guess. I just figure, though, you know, We've got a good bunch of people here. We, you know, they. I don't think you need to be so, uh, you know, harsh on them. It's not about being harsh, wings. It's about, it's about making sure that the ship remains intact. We are kind of on our last legs here, wings. I mean, to make sure everyone is. Sharp, always ready, always, always ready for what's to come. You know, I want to make sure that the people who work here are always succeeding, always achieving. And if anyone in our group doesn't succeed in what they do, uh, repercussions will be had. But I trust you, Wings. You're one of our most talented pilots. You, people like Sunflower, they'll be fine. They'll never let me down, right? Of course not. Um, of course not, Caleb. You know, I believe in what you've been trying to do and all that, but... And he, he pats you, and it's kind of like, that's good to hear, Wings. That's always good to hear. Um, I think the distraction that Moon gives you is enough enough for Darcy uh, for you to use the dongle to yeah do as you do what you want. I think you you kind of wrest control of the holographic projectors away from him. I think while it's happening, uh, you see wings in the background, kind of like classic 1960s uh, sci-fi computers. For some reason, they just start sparking and blowing dust and maybe the lights kind of flicker on and off as Darcy you're taking control of this you notice as well uh, grandma while well, you and hench and I forgot the other guy's name <laughs> you're you're probably leading them around a goose chase and hench is kind of like is kind of like what's a dollar grandma and and you kind of notice this you you going to tell her what a dollar is <laughs> no you don't have to but what what a what a stupid question <laughs> we don't have time for it like this we have to find the children now <laughs> and yeah you notice this flickering as well cat as you're making your way through the oh well you notice from the outside as you're making through kind of like the tunnels and whatnot because the thing is the projectors aren't there uh and mm. moon uh as you're standing over the prone body of sunflower you hear your name being called out again behind you. For a split second, your brother's face is going, Faye, as it goes away. And I think I think that we can end off right there. I think we're 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 close to time. Uh, yeah. So that was so that was misspent youth. Uh, we have two more two more sessions to go. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks everyone for playing for for playing along with this. Um, 
I'm going to stop the broadcast here and we can do a bit a tiny debrief. I won't say too long because we're close to time, but just kind of some quick thoughts and laying out what to do next. But yeah, so uh, I would say I'm going to turn off the broadcast. Goodbye, YouTube.